Gentlemen, distinguished delegates, Mr. President, Senegal congratulates you and we wish you every success during your presidency of the 76th session of the General Assembly. I wish to once again congratulate the Secretary General upon his re-election. We wish the Secretary General every success in the exercise of his mission for the benefit of member states. The theme of this session is a reminder of the magnitude and the urgency of the challenges which we face to arrive at a better and safer world. This is most urgent in the Sahel, in the Sahel where terrorist groups continue to wage attacks and to engage in deadly lootings targeting innocent people. As a troop contributor to MINUSMA with 1,350 troops, my country stands in solidarity with fraternal countries that are enduring tremendous difficulties. We continue to advocate for MINUSMA to be vested with a robust mandate to effectively combat terrorist groups. Moreover, there is a vital need for G5 Sahel member states to enjoy adequate support in their vital struggle against terrorism. Wherever it may take root, terrorism remains a global threat, and uh, the United Nations system of collective security needs to fight off this threat. We cannot allow Africa to become the safe haven for international terrorism. In the Middle East, Senegal reiterates its call for the enjoyment of the Palestinian people's right to a viable state coexisting in peace with the State of Israel, each within secure and internationally recognized borders. There is also an urgent need to combat the devastating economic health-related and social fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic. Senegal has uh, engaged in transparent management of the pandemic as soon as it emerged in March 2020. We have been publishing a daily report about this. Moreover, we have deployed an economic and social resilience program uh, uh, to the tune of $2 billion to support households, businesses, workers, and our diaspora. We have significantly expanded the medical resources available to individuals. We have provided free tests and care, and we have gained access to vaccines. I wish to thank partner countries and institutions for their support in our fight against the pandemic. I applaud the generous and concerted surge of support through the COVAX initiative. The significant efforts notwithstanding, there is a divide between vaccinated countries in the north and non-vaccinated countries in the south. This divide continues to widen, and this only sets back efforts to eradicate the pandemic and to achieve a return to normal life for us. The each man for himself mentality will not end the pandemic. Nobody will be shielded if the virus and its variants continue to circulate anywhere. Only a global response facilitating access for all to vaccines will lead to an end to this global scourge. In this spirit, I wish to thank partner countries and institutions who have been supporting the vaccine production project of the Dakar Pasteur Institute. This is a major initiative servicing Africa. Senegal will contribute to the financing of this project through part of our special drawing rights. At the same time, it is incumbent upon us to persevere in our efforts to achieve economic recovery. This is the thrust of the New Deal for Africa. 
which was an outcome of the 18th of May summit in Paris on financing for African economies. Thanks to the consensus that prevailed at the G20, the first goal of the summit was achieved with an allocation, a historic allocation of special drawing rights to the tune of $650 billion. I applaud the diligent approach of Madam Kristalina Georgieva, Director General of the IMF, in achievement of this consensus. Africa, thereby, was able to have its share of $33 billion to shore up our health-related resilience, uh, partly mitigating the impact of the crisis and launching our economic recovery. This is a significant step forward, which should be welcomed. And yet, and yet, in the light of the tremendous consequences from the crisis, Africa needs additional financing of at least $252 billion by 2025. This is necessary to mitigate the fallout and to shore up our economic recovery. Let us thus work together to achieve the second goal of Paris. That is, to reallocate for African countries, uh, in line with the modalities to be agreed upon, to reallocate $67 billion mobilized uh, on the uh, consenting uh, SDR shares of wealthy countries, of wealthy consenting countries to achieve the agreed upon $100 billion threshold. We can achieve this by maintaining transparent and trust-based dialogue, which is already underway. In this way, we can solidify the premises of a new deal with Africa for reformed global economic and financial governance that is both fairer and more inclusive. This new deal is possible if we see to it that the relationship structures with our continent rely more on partnership than on official development assistance. Clearly, assistance alone cannot meet the needs of a continent of more than one billion, where a great deal is yet to be built. Beyond domestic efforts, the Africa of aspirations particularly needs access to adequate concessional and mixed resources in the form of loans to finance the sectors which are vital for its economic growth. These include inter alia, infrastructure, energy, agriculture, industry, but also such sectors as water, sanitation, health, education, and training. And this list is not exhaustive. To achieve this, a new deal with Africa should help to vanquish the deterministic mindsets, mindsets which have hampered access of Africa to those resources. I would call upon partner countries and institutions to work with us to relax the rules of the OECD to harness Africa's investment potential. Each of us has a role to play and this is important insofar as the development investment needs of Africa are shared opportunities for growth and prosperity. Likewise, reform of the United Nations is necessary 76 years after the birth of our organization. The multilateral system inspires confidence so long as it brings together and reflects the aspirations and interests of all stakeholders. It is high time for the composition of the Security Council to reflect the realities of the 21st century United Nations in all of its diversity and not the reality of the obsolete post-World War landscape. We reaffirm our commitment to the African position, shared African position, which was set out in the 
Azzolini consensus. Building our shared future also means taking care of our planet in line with the principle of shared but differentiated responsibility given the ravages of global warming under our nationally determined contribution we will pursue our efforts towards a energy transition pursuing the goal of of more than 30 percent of uh, installed power capacities being renewable energy. This will be shored up with the solar electrification project underway for 1,000 villages in line with the partnership for the green, with the Green Climate Fund and the West African Development Bank. Ultimately, thanks to the gas to power strategy, we are seeking to achieve the goal of 100% clean energy with the forthcoming use of gas resources. However, our country cannot achieve an energy transition, cannot abandon polluting practices uh, and, and abandon the pol and, and eschew the polluting practices of industrialized nations without a viable, fair, and equitable alternative. Natural gas use as a transition energy should be maintained. For this reason, we believe that an end to financing for the gas sector under the pretext that gas is a fossil fuel without accounting for the fact that it is also and especially clean energy would represent a major obstacle in our efforts to achieve energy transition and in universal access to electricity, competitivity, and economic and social development. Our country is already shouldering the overwhelming burden of the uneven exchange. We should not be expected to shoulder the burden of an uneven energy transition. Hence, consequently, I would call for the maintenance of gas financing mechanisms to be maintained as a transition, as an uh, energy of transition. There's another important challenge which we face, that of the status of women worldwide. As we commemorate the 25th anniversary of the Beijing Declaration and Program of Action with the Generation Equality Initiative, we know that there is progress that is yet to be achieved. However, we appreciate particularly the long road between us and the goal of eliminating all forms of inequality, discrimination, and violence against women and girls. It is not acceptable for women and girls who represent half of humanity to continue to endure such treatment in the 21st century. Senegal, thereby, in January 2020, criminalized acts of rape and pedophilia. Let us continue the overarching mobilization for women's protection and empowerment, but also for young people, including through the promotion of inclusive financing and in through resource allocation under the Global Financing Facility Campaign, which was initiated by the, global, by the World Bank. Mr. President, dear friends, these are, without a doubt, difficult and uncertain times. However, let us, let us cherish the hope, as, uh, let, us, let us maintain hope, as suggested in the theme for this session. To achieve this, we need to act. And we need to bear in mind that the United Nations was built on the promise of a better world, governed by the principles of sovereignty, of cooperation, of diversity. It is faith in these ideals which has brought representatives of people to this hall for the past 76 years. Consequently, every blow to sovereignty, every blow to cooperation and to diversity represents a blow to our shared ideals, a blow to our reason for being here. 
a world weary of the blight of war, of isolationism, environmental destruction, and material servitude is headed for a fall. The promise of a better world for all can bloom in the soil of dialogue and mutual respect. It will wither in the dogma of conform conformism and cultural and civilizational contempt. This promise blossoms in the spirit of openness, respect and care for the other, easing the plight of the hungry, the thirsty, the poor, those who are ill and those who lack education. To that end, we cannot merely allow empty promises to take hold. It is our duty to work for a future of fulfilled promises. This future requires that we lay down our weapons, that we stand in stronger solidarity, that we protect our environment, that we cultivate our shared values, that we accept and respect our differences by abandoning civilizational dicta. Thereby, let us bring forth the world of our dreams, a world of peaceful coexistence, a better world for all. I wish every success for the 76th session of the General Assembly. Thank you.